You mentioned the, the voice AI agents. In my experience, when the agent has a specific objective, for example, it's qualifying a lead or it's making sure that they can reschedule an appointment, when they have a simple objective, they tend to perform better than if you leave it open. Like if you just have a, a number that people can call for any reason, the AI voice agent will not perform as well as one with specific objectives. Is that how you see it, this technology working as at the moment right now? I would say three or four months ago, potentially yes. Now we've learned how to create prompts or agents with the correct instructions. If the agent is given the correct knowledge base so that it has reference to it, then you can get pretty complex and it will learn over time. The key thing that we're doing is monitoring how well that these agents are actually engaging after we set them up. That's the, probably the most important part of what we're doing right now is monitoring what's happening after we set the agent up. This solution that you use, is this something that you offer along with your services? Is there like information that you can share so people learn more about this technology? Yeah, you can go to our website, accelerateyourmarketing.com and there's a form there, contact form if you want to you know, contact me or you know, send an email. You can uh, text my team. We do offer local service ads optimization and Google business profile optimization. And two months ago, we started offering our own AI agent that we've built software for along with software for local service ads management. So what we do is we show the clients over time with the software, how their lead volume goes up with their response rate. So if the percentage of calls goes up that are answered within 30 seconds or down, you can see the effect on the lead volume. So we've got a software for that. It's awesome. So you do give feedback to your clients. You listen to all the calls, you give feedback to them. Let's think about the big picture on the optimizing. Like there's, you can add new locations, you can add new pictures, you can, now you can rank with your business name. That's another new feature that has been added lately. How often do you change those settings or how often do you talk with your client to optimize those available options that we have? Great question. We don't really change those too much. And I recommend that most businesses don't change them too much because when you change your bidding or your budget in particular, there's a few levers that you can pull on, on the platform. But if you change, for example, your bidding or your budget, what happens we found is that it somewhat resets the platform so that it, it has to almost starts all over again. It, it's really important that business owners really understand that it could start the process of that business getting fewer leads for a week, up to a week. So a lot of businesses that we talk to say, oh, we changed the bidding or the budget, you know, every week for the past month. And we don't know why we're not getting any more leads. Well, it's because they've been changing those parameters. And every single time that they change them, it, it, it does somewhat reset, mm -hmm. you know, the LSA for that business. And just like the learning phase in Google ads. Yeah. So I would really not do that too often. You know, there's a lot of other things that can really be optimized. What we measure, we can improve. And so the measurement of these data points is really important. If that's done correctly, I'm convinced that pretty much any business can have as, as many leads as they would need to be happy. We can point business owners in the right direction, if they want to expand and say, hey, you know, here's some other areas that have not much competition and a lot of search volume for your particular vertical. So it really can help a lot if a business is really looking to expand into a, a new market to know where there's not many competitors and, and where there's a lot of opportunity. And so we, we combine those two things together, you know, thanks to Google to basically like help business owners know where to go once they want to expand out. Okay. I was trying to, to make more like generic questions, but I also have shared this live with my Brazilian community, which is not very large, but we do have very specific questions. Do you want to go over these questions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the first one, what is a good cost per lead? Okay. So a good cost per lead can vary depending on the amount of revenue that a business gets. And that's really what it comes down to. If a business like a, a personal injury attorney can convert into a new client that's worth $15,000, cost per lead for them, $1,000 is good. 
because if they're converting one in three, they're paying three thousand dollars to make fifteen thousand. Yep. Whereas you know a cost per lead of a thousand dollars is laughable for a you know an electrician or a plumber or you know anybody else. So you know it also depends on the the location or the the part of the country that we're talking about, the city. You know, obviously, if you're in a bigger city, the leads are more expensive because it's more competition. And mm-hmm. typically, people will pay more money in the bigger cities. So those are all things to consider when you're trying to identify what a good cost per lead is. And, and it really varies for business. The largest city here in a 40-mile, 50-mile radius has 70,000 people. You know, so here we have ridiculous cost per lead. When it comes to roofing, I just sent a report to my client. He had 48 leads and they spent $2,800. 48 leads for roofing for $2,800, that's very cheap. Very, very, very cheap. But we have done for lawyers, they were spending even 120 per lead. But it was, it was a really big case for the lawyer. So even if you spend 200 bucks, 300, that's still a very good cost per lead. Absolutely. I would focus less on cost per lead and more on cost per acquisition, like I talked about earlier. It's the cost per acquisition that really matters. What is the CPA? And, and let's say that you've that previous example, you know, if I have a hundred percent conversion rate for that attorney with a thousand dollar leads, that means I'm only paying a thousand dollars for a new acquisition. Whereas if I'm converting one in three or 33%, then that's a way different ball game. That's three thousand dollars. So I would focus on that cost per acquisition if I was a business owner. That's really where the rubber meets the road.